It is absolutely outrageous how little PhD students can be paid by a university. They are paid so little because I think like the cynic in me says that they can get away with just paying very little to their PhD students because it's education. When in reality, universities earn a lot of money from the research that PhD students do. Now let's check out this. There was a very recent article, May this year, where people say PhD students face cash crisis with wages that don't cover living costs. When I was doing my PhD in 2007 to 2012, it was absolutely like, not very much money, but it was just enough to get by. It looks like the amount of money that PhD students actually get has not really increased since my time in 2012. Now let's have a look at this, salary shortfalls. Now clearly, it's not expected to earn loads of money during your PhD, but here it's found that PhD students were nearly $8,000 short of a living wage on average, and the national shortfall in the US was over 4,500, which is just ridiculous, horrible. Shame on you, universities. And it's not only in the States. Here in the UK, um, let's have a look. The average PhD stipend, or the current minimum PhD stipend, is £15,000, which is just under $20,000 US dollars, which is about what I was earning in 2012, which is so stupid. I think this is the saddest part, that the universities that do offer a living wage are true outliers. So, here we are. A PhD in biology, 42,000, well above the living cost, fantastic. But look at this graph. This is biology PhD students and where they can and cannot get by. So the bottom one is the guaranteed minimum salary and the cost of living. So if the blue uh, bar is longer than the orange one, then it's terrible. Look at this, North Carolina State University. Look at the short four there. You know, Brown University, well done. The, the stipend is above the cost of living. University of Southern Mississippi, M-I-S-S-I-A. -S -S Look at it, it's just ridiculous. I just can't believe that these universities can get away still with paying this level of stipend to university students. And so yes, I understand the universities all say, well, you know, it's further education, uh, but reality is that these are highly educated people that may or may not have done a master's and they would command a much higher salary should they go into um, industry and still do research. So it's just insane to me that we are allowing this to happen today. So let's have a quick look at some of the stipends across the world. Now, obviously, if we want to look at great PhD stipend allowances, we're gonna end up going to the Scandinavian and Nordic countries, aren't we? And that is where we end up. So the countries offering the highest PhD stipends, I found this on uh, studyinternational.com. Here we go, Norway, 54 or nearly 55,000 US dollars, fantastic. Another one, Denmark, nearly 55,000 US dollars. Switzerland, Finland. Now, if you wanna go check out my other video about the best places to do a PhD, you'll find out some crossover with these countries. Now, these countries are forward thinking. They are understanding the fact that to get the best out of your PhD students and your research community in general, you need to pay them exactly what they deserve. And I think it's only a matter of time before the US is gonna to struggle to find anyone who wants to sort of live on poverty wages to do highly advanced research. Now you can't believe everything you read online, but I found this awesome website called phdstipends.com and it's a self-reported sort of uh, PhD stipend aggregator. So you can actually look to see what other people are earning. But what I think it will do is give you a great opportunity to see the difference between the different types of stipends offered by different universities across the world. So remember it's self-reported, so you know, be careful. Take the numbers with a grain of salt. I don't even know what that means. So I think here we can see all of the different types of PhD stipends, um, and it goes from 30,000 to what? No, that's, okay, test, well done you, whoever put test in. 26,000, 28,000, 42,000. So you can see there's actually quite a wide range of PhD stipends, and I think it's one thing that you should really, really think about before getting into a PhD. What 
you are actually going to earn and if you can actually live off that for a number of years, potentially up to five to seven years if you're in the States. And of course, there's some people that don't get a stipend at all. And in fact, they are self-funded. Not my recommendation. Let's have a look now at ways that you can spend your stipend and also how you can boost it. This video is brought to you by my newsletter. Go check it out at andrewstapleton.com.au forward slash newsletter. The link is in the description. When you sign up, you'll get five emails over about two weeks. Everything from the tools I use, the podcasts I've been on, how to write the perfect abstract, the perfect daily schedule, and more. It's exclusive content only available on that newsletter, so go sign up now. So spending your PhD stipend money has to be done very carefully. Now, when I was a student, it went on rent, it went on food, it went on entertainment, quite a lot on entertainment. And also it went on to purchasing the most rubbish car I think I've ever owned, but I loved it. I loved it so much. Anyway, you can live off your PhD stipend as long as the cost of living where you are isn't greater than your stipend, obviously. There are ways to make it stretch further. Now, I found that with my 20,000 Australian dollars a year, I was able to live a comfortable but very simple life. And uh, I think that's just kind of like the student PhD experience. One of the things that I found is that I was earning more money than I'd ever earned before because I'd come straight from my master's. So I went from having to pay to go to university to being paid a little bit to go to university. And I thought that was bloody fantastic. But do not get sort of swept up into that mindset. Remember that you are bringing skills to a certain research department. You should be rewarded by the university as much as possible. And settling for a place where the, the PhD stipend is not as much as uh, the cost of living, you'll end up putting yourself under so much financial pressure that uh, essentially it will just be another weight on your shoulders. Uh, you know, your mind should be focusing on the research. It should be freed up to sort of like, you know, get through problems creatively. If you're always thinking about, well, where am I gonna pay the, for this bill? Where is my next meal coming from? Am I gonna be able to afford rent? All of that is not useful to your PhD progress. And I would urge you, Whoever's doing a PhD, do not just go, well, now I'm getting paid to go to university. Think about the money in more detail because it's what actually will help you sort of finish and enjoy the process along the way. It doesn't have to be a struggle. You just have to choose a place that will reward you with a stipend um, appropriately and give you enough money to live on like an adult like a person who's actually been to university. It's outrageous that they can pay so little, but choose university wisely. Make sure they give you a stipend. Otherwise, I really think it's a no deal. There are a few ways that you can boost your university stipend. Now, during my PhD, I've done a video about this, by the way, as well. You can go check it out wherever that goes. But essentially, um, there are ways that you can earn money. And I think my top way of earning money was twofold. First of all, as a chemistry PhD student, I was able to demonstrate in the labs for undergraduate students. So doing their first year lab demonstrations, talking them through the experiments. If that's an opportunity in your university, absolutely grab onto that. Um, because you know it's university based. I think uh, I really did get a love of teaching through that interaction with students. So look at the university, anywhere where you can sort of like help earlier um, uh, PhD students or graduates or undergraduates, whatever it is, I think will be really valuable. I certainly, that you know, that's where I enjoyed it the most. Some other people in the lab also ended up working in the International Student uh, Service Office where they were helping people graph, uh, craft, uh, you know, uh, essays and doing maths and, you know, just doing very basic stuff, but helping out students. Absolutely invaluable and you get paid for it. Great. Tutoring was my money maker. It was my cash cow. Another weird saying, isn't it? But essentially, is it because you milk the, uh, is it you milk the money out? Is that, I don't really get it. I would put up on all of the student notice boards in the chemistry department that I was offering cramming sessions where we would go through all of the past exam papers and answer them. 
because ultimately that is where all of the questions tended to come from. So that was offered to university undergraduates in chemistry who were um, just struggling. And that sort of like two weeks to a month out from the exam was a perfect time to sort of, uh, you know, focus on teaching. I did two or three students a day at the end of the day and uh, it certainly helped them, it helped me. And if you enjoy teaching and one-on-one -on -one stuff, you know, that is certainly a place where I, uh, I would really recommend you sort of focus your efforts if you want to sort of boost up your stipend. So there we have it. There's everything you need to know about PhD stipends. Now, one of the biggest things I would say is really think about the money and whether or not you can actually live off the stipend during your PhD. Ask those tough questions during your PhD interviews you know, phone up the graduate office and actually ask them, what is my stipend year on year? Does it keep up with inflation? What is the cost of living? You know, all of that stuff, particularly if you're moving to a place uh, a new place where you don't under, really understand like the cost of living, whether it's the rental stuff or whether it's food or entertainment, things can very quickly add up and become very expensive. And you do not wanna put yourself under financial pressure to do a PhD. You need to feel relaxed, you need to feel creative, and that is very hard when you're always wondering and worrying about where your next meal coming from if you can afford rent don't do it. Let me know in the comments what you would add to that. Have you got a PhD stipend? How much is it? Um, do you live comfortably? What would you recommend to others? I'd love to know. Put it in the comments. And also go check out academiainsider.com. That's my project where I've got my eBooks, the Ultimate Academic Writing Toolkit, the PhD Survival Guide, my Insider Forum, and soon, maybe a cheeky mini course. I'll keep you posted. All right then, I'll see you in the next video.